Hey everybody. Hi. It's Quilt Church. Oh, it's Quilt Church Live. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Ah, okay. How are you? My mic is on, but I'm looking at the chat to make sure. Um, hey everybody. Hi, hi, hi. I'm so glad you came to the broadcast. It's Saturday night and, um, and the gang's all here. Let me see who is here in the chat. We have, let me scroll up, Myra. Myra is here. Bip is here. Here, Carol Hempel, my spirit animal. Um, uh, Dead Chuffed, hello, hello. Hang on, hang on now. You're not Valerie. I don't know if I know your real name. Actually, I don't think I do, but I remember Valerie. I remember when I get to you, Valerie, I will remember. Um, Carol Quilts, the other equally awesome Carol in the chat. So Kate, hi Kate. Quilty Nancy is here. Viv is here. And it's, 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 no, Crafts for Others is Valerie. Crafts for Others is Valerie. Yes, yes, there it is. Felt like sweets. Uh, Charles, okay, Charles, yes, yes. Uh, Stephanie, hey, Stephanie Cake, brilliant. If you have cake in your name, you're most welcome at Quilt Church. I think everyone will agree. I speak for us all. Um, Viv, it's, it's, it's Charles, it's Padma, yes. Um... Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, so many people <clears throat> coming from the workshop. Faith is here, yo Mary. Little Bird Stitch, thank you so much. I love your name as well. If there's birds and cakes in your screen name, I feel like, I feel like you're a good person. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pam, I'm not reading the chat, but I'm looking at the names and uh, say, Stephanie, okay, great, great, great. Um, mm -hmm. Vicky's here, hey Vicky. And a nun maker, Amy. I think you're back, right? You were here before. I think so. Um, we've got Kathy in the chat, and I mean, we're here. And and who knows who else will be showing up tonight? It's late for me, you know, here in London. Um, and if and some of you were at the um, at the Bronte workshop earlier this evening, um, and so was I. And you know, because you saw me over there, uh, it was great. I mean, I you know, we'll get the feedback forms and we'll, of course, we all want to make, you know, tweaks for next time. But, you know, having never done it ever before, I mean, I think it went really great. I would have, you know, there's a couple things with my lecture I would have changed, but ugh, I had a, I had a slide in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. Ugh, amateur, but um, wow, all of my research like converged on that moment. And I felt like, okay, I think, I think I did. I think I did my best. I do. I do. So hopefully people liked it. Hey, Molly. Molly's our resident librarian. Um, workshop was great. Good, good. We had a lot of great comments, you know, but I think like, like if, if somebody is really hating it, they're probably not gonna be like, this is terrible. Or actually, maybe they will do that. Because if someone's really grumpy, they might want to say it in the chat. Not that anyone has to do it here. Quilt Church. <laughs> you can, you can, you can be, uh, you can be honest, but don't, don't be mean. Um, that should be the rule for the internet. Be honest, but don't be mean. I don't know if that would get us where we need to go. But anyway, I think sometimes if people aren't happy, they might just not say anything or they might just click out. But Jenny told me, we just briefly chatted after, um, after the workshop closed. And she said that the people, so, so out of all the people who signed up, you know, like two thirds of them, well, I guess about half of them. Yeah, just half of them were watching live tonight. The other people don't do the live thing and they'll watch it on their own. So she said, we retained all the people who signed in, you know, at the top of the show, which is really the best marker, I think. So, so really happy. Uh, and it'll be even better next time when we do another one. I hope we can. Um, y you know, I, I am always nervous. I should have said at the beginning that my lecture was about 30 minutes. I should have said so. I mean, I had 40 minutes. You know, I mean, I, I had 40 minutes of material, but I didn't. Anyway, thank you. I feel like I did rush a little bit and it might have been better if I didn't. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Molly is seam ripping her Dresden circle. Look, you know, this is a very good time to do that. So you can keep sewing if you were in the workshop on your stuff, or you can sew, uh, work on something else. If you weren't doing the workshop thing that we just did for Quilt Folk, you can rip things out, you can start over, you can just eat chips. I'm gonna open this window because I have to close the door. 
because Eric is sleeping. Imagine that. That awesome helicopter was back uh, today, right before the workshop began. So anyway, if you are new here, um, we've got, hey, Rhonda Kernoodle. Uh, we have got, I've got a great show for you. Um, sure, I'm a little bit tired. Yes, I have to do another thing tomorrow, but the bulk of my work was today. So that big lecture, I don't have another one of those tomorrow. If it was QuiltCon, I would, but I don't have that now. So we can just hang and we can um, look at some amazing stuff while I was waiting. I was doing research on the fly, you know, um, to look up things about irons and pins, it was great. But uh, I also had a little time before I was, before I assumed that duty um, to, I had some time to get some stuff ready for you. And, you know, if you, so if you're new, if you're new here, uh, the deal is this, um, yes, yes. The deal is this, I, Twitch is, is not something that most of our community knows about, or, or if they know about it, they don't really care about it. And there wouldn't really be a reason, uh, there wasn't really a reason to care about Twitch or to have Twitch on your radar uh, if you're a quilt person, uh, because Twitch has been a live streaming platform for gamers mostly, and 95% of the content on this on this platform, maybe 90, maybe it's like 90%, I don't know, I'm sure they could tell us. A, a, the vast majority of it is gamer content. But over the past couple years, the past few years, Twitch has been interested in expanding what they, you know, what, what kind of content is offered on their channel. And it is growing. Um, I saw some statistic about Twitch that during the pandemic, like viewership shot way up and of course, that happened to a lot of different um, platforms. But hey, Dee Marie, um, so glad you're here. So, so Twitch, Twitch only does live streaming, and the more I learn about the platform, the more excited I get about what it can do. And and people who have been here these past few months, um, has it been like three months? I mean, the first few shows like barely count, but they do count. I feel like we've been doing Quilt Church solid for two months, but is it more? Anyway. Um, I'm a baby at this and pretty much everybody, not every single person here, but many people who are here had never used Twitch before, like Quilt Church, and I hadn't either. So you don't have to know much about it. I can tell you that if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, Amazon owns Twitch. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get one free subscription to a Twitch channel. And you should use it on, on me <laughs> because you get to, you support the work that I do here and you also don't have to watch any ads because there will be ads at some point. I don't know when, but there will be. Not a lot, but some. But you don't have to watch them if you subscribe using your Amazon Prime account. Um, so, what am I trying to say? Okay, yeah, so I learned about this Twitch thing. I learned that other people were using Twitch who weren't gamers. And I learned that basically what I do all day, I could do with people. <laughs> and what I do all day, a lot of what I do all day is I look um, at quilt stuff. I investigate quilt stuff. I get to be a quilt nerd. And um, I mean, I don't get paid to be a quilt nerd, but in so many words, so I, I'm an editor, I'm a writer, um, I am a researcher, a lecturer. I just know a lot about quilts because Quilts are, are groovy and they have, they kind of uh, open us up to the entire world. If we look at quilts, we can actually, it's a short distance away from science and technology. Quilts over the years, you know, they change because dye manufacturing changes and um, technology changes in terms of how cloth is manufactured and um, the way quilts um, look uh, reflects the time period that they were in. You can even find old quilts that have newspaper stuck in them. I don't think I actually mentioned, I saw a quilt. The woman, this woman showed me a quilt she took out of the back of her minivan somewhere in America and um, Hello from London, by the way. Um, she said, Mary, you have to see this. I was doing a lecture somewhere, a gig. And she showed me this quilt taken out of the back of her minivan. And it was made by like her, her grandfather. I remember that it was her grandfather. 
in the Great Depression, and newspaper was the batting. So there was the patchwork top, and there was the backing, which I'm sure was just like an old sheet or something. And the batting, the warm stuff inside, I don't need to tell the quilters out there, was layers of newspaper. Yeah. So if you have an, an object like that, like you, you learn so much about that time period. Of course, quilts are very beautiful and quilts have been bought and sold for a whole lot of money because they transcend, you know, some, they become art, you know, they transcend some sort of spiritual plane and become art. And of course, that's a big controversy, whether art and craft can, can mingle and, and quilts are domestic art. So they even count and Quilts are just full of really interesting avenues of thought, and I really like them. I like to make them, um, but I really like to nerd out about them. If you know me, you know that's true. So Twitch allows me to do with you what I do a lot of the day, which is learn about quilts and explore the topic and let my imagination and my, I shouldn't say imagination, but let my curiosity um, just just run, run, run wild um, using the internet, mostly. Um, I do go to libraries sometimes. Uh, taking you to the library, I don't know. But, um, but the, the thing that I can do on Twitch is I can live stream being curious about quilts. And once I figured that out, I was like, well, I'm going to like start a Twitch show. So I did. And uh, yeah, listen, I, I don't, I said, I subscribe to one other channel. She's a quilter. There, There is a, Quiltoni is really sweet and she does cool stuff on her channel. But I mean, I, I mean, the Twitch doesn't know how bad they need us, the quilt people. There's millions of us. And Twitch is so, I mean, the truth is, and I didn't, I didn't say anything because I'm like, oh, Twitch is so great, Twitch is so great. I don't want to be annoying about it. But to be honest, the workshop today, the Bronte workshop, it would have been, I mean, we could, do it on Twitch. And honestly, the capability of Twitch for live streaming something like that, it's better than Zoom. I mean, it was fine. It was great. But that's the kind of thing I mean. Hosting quilting workshops like Zoom is is fine. Zoom is Zoom is fine. It works great. It was great. But, you know, maybe next time we do one of those lectures, I can convince people to, to use this. It's kind of scary because it's new, whatever, but it's like, it's just a website. So, so that's what's going on. Um, oh yes, Branwell, so scary. Um, yeah, Myra, I, you ask all the good questions that I don't know. Charles, will you look at Myra's question there and see if you have an answer for her? Not that you need to be our IT support, but, um, you may, you may get an answer from him because he's very smart. Um, Dee Marie, I will look at my email before tomorrow. <laughs> Listen, it's been crazy around here. Anyway. I often have chips. Today I have some cheese. I have very, very stinky, wonderful cheese. It's so, so, so good. I will say that I got some cheese the other day from Borough Market where I was today and got these lovely flowers. I really like a pungent <laughs> cheese, uh, cow, goat, you know, whichever. But I got a cheese that is too stinky for me. I have never experienced that, but I'm telling you, this this cheese, it smells like a barnyard. Fully, just full barnyard. And I, I just, I was like, uh-uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, so I, I, I saved it for Eric. We'll see if he can do it. But I just, I don't know if I've ever turned cheese away. But I did. Okay, and I have a glass of Prosecco, which is so so. I mean, it's 10.30 here. I have amazing things for you. Okay, I hope you're all doing great. And welcome to the content. Okay. So, the quilt that you're, oh, now I have to switch my little thing here. The quilt that you see on your screen, this is how we start every show. We, I put a quilt up on my screen or a detail shot of a quilt. And that's where we begin. Um, by the way, I have a lot of energy because we did the big thing today. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. Um, I feel good, but every once in a while I feel that way. And then I hit a wall and you can tell 
and so I have to go. But I will, um, I'll let you know ahead of time so you can be prepared that I will turn into a pumpkin. Okay, so, so this quilt, I was thinking about what to bring you all, and I remembered one of the most extraordinary quilts I've ever seen in my entire life. And just be ready. I'm serious. I'm. This is not too much hype. Be ready for your jaw to hit the floor. I'm sorry. It's kind of gross sounding, but okay. Close your eyes. I'm serious. Close your eyes. I have to bring this in. I'm serious. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Just one second. Okay. Okay. Look. Now, what are we seeing? What could it be? This quilt, <laughs> this quilt is, um, is kept in the, um, uh, Winterthur Museum, okay, uh, in New England, and this is, uh, it's considered a crazy quilt, yeah, um, and here's, I'm gonna read to you from the Winterthur's, uh, entry on on this they wrote about it on their on their blog okay you've never seen this quilt this quilt <laughs> okay i'm just gonna i'm just gonna read this okay uh this is from linda eaton for the winter tour museum uh 20, 2007 she wrote uh selections from the winter Thur, winter tour i think it's pronounced winter tour collection um winter tour does not always acquire objects in pristine condition untouched by time. Um, <laughs> um, that's really funny, Molly. For some objects, the years have not been kind. At some point, they have been purposefully altered, accidentally broken, or their histories forgotten. However, in their new state, these objects take on new meanings, tell new stories, and remind us that history can always be rewritten. An extraordinary early 19th century quilt in Winterthur's exhibition, Collecting for the Future, recent additions to the collection, exemplifies how objects can be repurposed over time, how objects can be repurposed over time, but still preserve fascinating information. This quilt has a unique appearance and connection to the Revolutionary War. While the quilt's checkerboard star design is fashioned from pieced brown, blue, and pattern wools, the majority of the object is dominated by a large semicircular red, red textile. This red fabric is an extremely rare late 18th century men's cloak, a piece of outerwear worn draped over the shoulders with an attached collar that folded down around the wearer's the cloak, and later the cloak quilt, descended through at least six generations in the same family before coming to Winterthur. Family lore indicates, are you, just, 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 just sit down. Family lore indicates that an ancestor who fought in the Northern campaign of the American Revolution captured the cloak during a battle with a British soldier and kept it as a war prize. Which ancestor and which battle is still unclear, but there are several strong possibilities. I mean, I mean, red coats, it's, it's, it's a revolutionary war cloak in the quilt. And it looks like something that you would see in, in the metropolitan, in, in MoMA, right? I mean, I, 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 I don't, I mean, I just, I, it's so, it's so beautiful. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Really? Like, oh, I'm hitting things. I mean, it looks like, anyway, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, you can't unsee it now. Okay. The cloak, okay, blah, blah, blah. the earliest documented family owners of the, of the quilt are Thomas Patterson, 1809 to 1891, and his wife, Miranda, from Ohio. Miranda likely created the quilt in the early 19th century. I've got more pictures for you. Hang on one second. Around the time of her marriage to Thomas in 1828. So like 1828-ish. However, they came, how, how, the way they came to possess the cloak is a matter of choice. Okay, so 
I am going to show you some more pictures from this um, from this quilt. Okay, here's the detail. I've got a lot of a lot of stuff to show you. Um, <laughs> Both of Thomas's grandfathers fought in the Revolutionary War, so it is possible that one of them was the soldier who captured the cloak. However, the recollect recollections. We're going to learn more about the, this, the fabric, right? Um, one of the recollections, um, okay, and the, some of this is like genealogy of like, who got it? You know, we don't, that, you can read more about that. I'll put the link in the chat. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Historically, it was common to recycle fabrics into new projects. Quilt makers frequently recycled clothing or colorful printed fabrics into their quilt designs. For example, the now unknown maker of a rare embroidered wool quilt in the Winterthur collection fashioned its dark brown stripes. Okay, I have a picture of this, hang on. Fashioned its dark brown stripes um, from the fabric of heavy wool breeches. <gasps> heavy wool breeches, that's, that's breeches. Isn't that cool? That's so amazing. I don't know. I think it's amazing. Ugh. Sorry, we're not there yet. Um, and by the way, if you're new, uh, you should know that I pull some things together to show you, but I don't, I don't, I didn't know that I didn't read this ahead of time. Like I go, I find things, I grab things from my files and my notes that I want to know more about. And I learn about things with you. So it's not a lecture. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but it's, it's an exploration. So that's, that's the difference. Okay. Um, okay, breaches, breaches, breaches. Mm -hmm. However, it is only through close inspection of the dark brown fabric that we can identify it as deconstructed clothing. There is no mistaking or ignoring the red cloak in Winterthur's new quilt. Its maker designed the rest of the quilt around the intact cloak, perhaps reluctant to cut it up in the more traditional fashion, since it viscerally symbolized the victory of America's forces over their British enemy. Ah! The quilt is not the only known object to recycle. Yep. Uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. Don't read ahead. Okay. <laughs> the quilt is not the only um, object to recycle the captured clothing of a British soldier into new projects. Can you believe this? The wool from a British soldier's coat was supposedly used to make a pair of baby shoes in the collection of the new museum of the American Revolution. They descended in the family of Sergeant James Davenport of Massachusetts, who served in the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War. He was a shoemaker's apprentice, da 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 da. Um, the details are scant, but it's possible that Davenport captured the British coat during the war and created the shoes for one of his children. Ugh. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, a scalp or something kind of weird. After all, creating clothing for the next generation of Americans seemed a fitting way to celebrate the nation's victory and independence. Okay. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. oh, and then this, okay, then they say, these people, look at this. Um, we... Re recently past and present collided when we welcomed members of the cloaks quilt the cloak quilts family for the first their first visit to Winterthur. Lee and Jane were able to see their family item on display in the galleries and spent a day exploring the <laughs> amazing right okay there's a few other pictures that I'll I'll share um, here these are pictures in the article okay can, can you can you can you see it right hey Natalie um. SJ, SJ Pepper is here. Yes. Maybe I said hi to you before. I don't know. Um, thanks for coming, guys. So this drawing of the street, the caption I have for this is, um, wait, this was in the article, but, but why? Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, it's some sort of, it's some sort of reference to the people behind it but this one here this one's pretty. um this 1801 etching illustrates a cloak similar to the one worked into winterthur's quilt with its wide attached collar and semicircular construction <laughs> behold courageous colonel monroe behold really dude a highland hero turned a blue turned a blue gone bow 
Not sure. Behold. I feel like he drew this. Um, okay. And then the slippers we saw. And okay, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, we saw we saw the things. Oh no, here's here's some more of this um this wonderful detail, right? Of of the stuff. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. This is close-ups of the of the wool on the back. Yeah, just crazy. Look at that. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you feel as strongly as I do that that is remarkable, but it's pretty remarkable. I mean, a red coat. <laughs> the red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. And someone's like, "Yep," <laughs> and I killed one. <laughs> so I'm gonna. This is this is nice fabric. I'm gonna put it into a quilt. But just the way the way that they did, that she did, right? We think it's this woman's name, Miranda Codner Patterson from Ohio. Hell yeah. Look at this. Wow, it's crazy. Hey, birdie baby bird. Wait, oh my gosh, it's Sid. Sid, hi. Sid's in the chat, y'all. Sid's one of my favorite people. Interesting. Um, Sid, I don't know if you saw, but we are looking at a quilt that was made with a, by an American using like a stolen British Revolutionary War British red coat. That is a flattened out cloak. Okay. You're sitting on my couch. She is. She, uh, uh, Sid is sitting on my couch in Chicago. You know, the sectional thing, it's a sectional couch. Well, that one piece should be attached to the couch. I keep forgetting to tell you and your mom that, but if you can, I, I mean, they just, they delivered it and they didn't put the two pieces together. We'll talk about it anyway. It's not supposed to be like that. Um, so how about this? As SJ says, the red, the way the red is faded reminds you of cherrywood fabric. Absolutely. Especially this part right here, right? Right up here. It's totally like that. It's totally like that. The, the cherrywood fabrics are so great. It's, that's a really good observation. Um, can't unsee it now. Exactly. Um, close up. Yeah, they didn't chop it up. It's great. It's historic. Quilts as historical evidence, a thousand percent. Okay. So that is our beginning quilt, right? Um, and if you just came in, you can watch the replay on Twitch of this show and see the whole thing about this quilt. You can also watch these replays on YouTube, but since YouTube, since um, Twitch got part, you know, the, when Facebook went down, like Twitch had a thing. So it is, it is not letting so many people upload the, once this broadcast is over, usually I just upload it right to YouTube, but um, it hasn't worked in a week. So people are all up in arms and trying to get in touch with the Twitch people to fix it, but it's been a minute. Okay. So because I had a um, big show today earlier, um, I got this ready for you. And then I got, <laughs> I found an article that I wanted to share with you. And I don't, I didn't get, I didn't have time to look at it too much. So I have that. And I think I'm just going to, to pull it up. Um, the ads on this web page are so awful. I'm so sorry. But I want to read this with you because it's crazy. It's crazy. So I apologize for the ads. You know, I should I should get a little bit of that ad money, you know, showing this stuff. But ugh, so just 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 look at the headline. This is from Glasgow News in what? When? 2021 in June. The headline because I find these things, right? I find these things people send me these things. Scottish patchwork quilt made from old clothes. You see, there's a connection here. Sells in Glasgow for 15,000 pounds. 15,000 pounds. Uh, that would be 15 sterling to US. Oh, no, not 15. <laughs> well, I mean, it's $20,000. Is that right? No. Yeah, yeah, hmm. it doesn't seem like enough. Anyway, the point is, is it's very expensive. So this better be good, right? Once again, I throw these things into my notes. I don't, you know, to look at later. And now it's later. So I look at it with you. 
So let's see what this is all about. Um, the quilt, this quilt was hand sewn over hundreds of hours. Okay. I don't know. By friends, Sheila. I'm sure that this is not being pronounced right. I apologize. Sheila Boyce from Glasgow and London based Annabelle Hardy. I should look her up. Actually, I need to write that down. Annabelle Hardy. Does anybody know these names? Annabelle Hardy. 15,000 pounds. I need a chip. Okay. Now, sorry. Because a lot of people who tune into this show sew while they're listening. And by the way, our friend Mark uh, described the show perfectly, I think, when he called it a, a video magazine. I think that's really brilliant. I love that. Um, and it's true. So, so, you know, podcasts are great. You listen to podcasts, but with quilts, you want to see them, right? So this is kind of this cool new format. But I, when I have things up on the screen, I'll read them to you. I know that you can read uh, the things, but uh, I don't know how big of a screen you're looking at and you may be looking at other things. So I'll read to you this, um, this content. And I did pull up, um, hang on, let me zoom out that because I did, um, pull the uh, picture off <clears throat> because the ads are terrible. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, why don't I just pull this down here and I'll, this is the only picture they gave, which seems lame. Okay. Hmm. Not a great photo. Okay. A patchwork quilt made from old clothes. I'm going to pull it back from, uh, full screen. It doesn't do it any favors. Okay. So you just have to, yeah. A patchwork quilt made from old clothes and inspired by a derelict training college for Scottish priests, I'm intrigued, has sold in Glasgow for a whopping 15,000 pounds. The giant quilt, giant quilt, which measures nine feet by seven feet. Interesting. And is made, that's pretty big, is made for display rather than, <laughs> SJ, I see you, um, rather than as a bed covering, was sewn, hand sewn over hundreds of hours by friends Sheila Boyce from Glasgow and London-based Annabelle Hardy. The pair met in Glasgow in the 1980s, interesting, when Annabelle moved to the city to study architecture. They became interested in quilting less than a decade ago. Interesting. Modern quilt things happening a decade ago and decided to set up a business making art patchwork quilts based on buildings. <gasps> you know who we're going to Google next? These girls, these women. All right. Their work is on show at the Glasgow Print Studio at Tron Gate 103 in the city center until July 27th. So this was this past summer where the quilt, which was inspired by St. Peter's Seminary in Cardross near Dumberton, was snapped up by a collector. Wow. Okay. Now we are going to look at what that is. This is St. Peter's. Oh gosh. Okay. Hang on. It's kind of a weird. Okay. I'm just getting a good picture for you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, here's what I just saw. I'm just going to share this with you because <laughs> You can see what I saw. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I feel like the quilt is going to tell us. So this is the seminary that they're talking about. Okay. Um, this is the seminary that they're, that they're referencing St. Peter's seminary in Cardras near Dumberton. So this, this structure, this seminary clearly not in use, right? Was the inspiration for their big quilt. I happen to know that this is brutalist architecture. That is the style of that. And I do not like it. I, I'm afraid I have tried with brutalism and I just, whew. If you know London, you may know, well, you may know the Barbican. Can we talk about the Barbican at some point? Not tonight. Um, so look, there's more here. Oh gosh. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. Interior of St. Peter's Seminary in 1966. <gasps> what? What? That? Oh my gosh. That makes me, that makes me want to cry. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Okay, sorry. I have to, I have to do something here. I have to pull that up side by side. Sorry, sorry. I have to pull that up side by side with, with this terrible, you know, this terrible, like, you know, destruction. No, no. Well, fine, fine. Don't, don't, don't illustrate my pain. You saw what I saw. We'll look at it again. Okay. So that was, that was the 1960s. Okay. This like gorgeous, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And now, okay, here, so that's the outside of it. I saw that too. Your husband's from Glasgow. Viv? Interesting. I have not yet been to Scotland. Ugh, the pandemic. Um, this is Wikipedia. Whoa. Whoa. Amazing. That, I mean, I mean, I'm, I, I'm so sad. Like, it's so intense. It's so intense to see that picture from before and see that now. I mean, going here um <clears throat> so this is back to the quilt okay uh the building designed in the 1960s as a training college for catholic priests closed more than 30 years ago and now lies in ruins um despite being officially recognized as one of scotland's most important modern structures okay i'm just i gotta Look, look at this, look at that. Oh my gosh, wow, wow. You see, you come here for quilt church and you see stuff like this. I just, I'm just dead, I'm sorry. Spaces that were beautiful that are now destroyed really, really, really hit me hard. Think of the memories in that place, you know? Think of, yeah, little bird, exactly. I mean, think about the learning and the friendships and the people and the life and the artistry. That's really tough to think about the beauty and the care and the time that people took when it was, look, original, when it was, when it was new. Oh man. I don't know. I don't know. This is honestly hard. Oh, I'm going to cry. Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's just awful. Sorry, it's just, it's just so beautiful. And now it's like that. Why? Why did that happen? Oh, sorry, I don't know. Um. Um, <clears throat> that's my window. You're supposed to have that window. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. That's like, a sh it's like a shot. It's just like, like I got shocked, like shot or something. <clears throat> okay. Another quilt by the duo, um, which was inspired by St. Bride's Church. We're not going to look at that one. Okay. We're just going to. Look at that one later. St. Bride's Church in East Kilbride is also shown on show in Glasgow, but is already owned by a London art gallery. Um, I am tired. It's true. It's true, but it just always really gets me hard. So, so is that, that's all they say. That's all this article has. 
is is that it sold for a lot of money. Well, here's what we're going to do. Before we go to this other thing. Um, yeah, you're right there with me, little bird, right? It's just, that's what I want to know. So I want to do one other thing. And then I've got more more eye candy for you. Really, like, beyond, beyond uh, eye candy. Found it totally by accident. Um, or did I? Uh... <laughs> I'm going to look up Annabelle Hardy, right? One of the gals who worked on that. Annabelle Hardy. Oh, artist. Right. Oh, Instagram. It popped right up, y'all. Okay. Let's bring up Annabelle. Oh. Well, I really wish that article would have given us a better picture of the quilt, for one thing. And then other ones. Look at this. Look at this. Arrange whatever pieces come your way dot com. Don't you love this show? I mean, I'm so, I mean, I know it's not good for me to like burst into tears. That literally was what happened. I literally burst into tears. It's exciting, um, but that's not why it's a great show. It's a great show because of this. I have never heard of this person. I love this person and the quilt that they showed in that article that we just read that made me cry. Um, not the article, the topic. Uh, I, it didn't look like much, and I don't mean that, I don't mean to throw shade, but that didn't, you know, I didn't understand why it was sold for 15,000 pounds, but I'm starting to warm up to the fact that this person is very good. Now, let's see, someone just said, hey, Kimba, the link above is the Boyce Hardy website. Are you saying, Kimba, I'm so glad you're here. Are you saying that Arrange Whatever Pieces Come Your Way is the, the duo? I think that's what you're saying. Let me um, let me look and make sure it's yeah. Boyce was the name. Okay, great, great, great. So yeah, Sheila and and maybe who whose husband's from Glasgow? Viv. Just because your husband's from Scotland does not mean that you can confirm. But would would this be pronounced? Would Sheila? Sorry, that's Ms. Boyce's name. Would that be Sheila? I don't know. Or if someone's from Scotland, that would be even better. Or if someone knows. Um, okay, so arrange whatever pieces come your way. Let's look at these objects. I mean, this is great. I love it. I love that. I think it's, I think it's wonderful. And I think it's velvet down here. That's pretty cool. I, I know, Faith, like, welcome to my, like, what I'm going to do before I fall asleep, right? It's probably a bad idea, but I'm gonna be investigating probably all the buildings that they are using in their art as inspiration or as, you know, part of the art. This this is velvet down here, totally. Um, and I mean, the piece is this gesture here. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. I mean, I, I don't know, like I love it. When I saw that, when I saw this, I did not, how dare they put that picture? What, what, did somebody just take that with like their digital camera from like 1992 while they were like falling down? <laughs> it's really bad. I'm sure it's wonderful. I'm sure we'll see the actual cult, but this is great. I mean, I'm, I'm completely, I'm interested and that must be the back. How about that? It looks like a quail. <gasps> it looks like a quail. Glasgow, oh, interesting. So it is Sheila. Glasgow. I didn't know that. All right, sold. So you can't buy it. What else? What else have they got? Quilts. Okay, let's look. Peace fingers. Yes, yes. I, I actually, I said, oh, we're gonna look at so much good stuff. It, the, and the contrast between this work and the work, the, the third thing we're gonna look at tonight. It just if you need convincing, which you don't. If you need convincing, or you need a good example, of why quilt nerdery is completely legitimate and obvious. We'll compare this quilt to the quilt that I will show you in a minute. And actually, why wait? You ready for this? Look at this. Just look at this. Look at this quilt. 
That quilt was made in like mid 19th century by a woman named Rebecca Scattergood. So we're going to look at some of Rebecca Scattergood's quilts. She's legendary. And I completely, completely forgot about her until I stumbled upon her work by chance. But I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of groovy. They're both quilts. They were made in different centuries. <laughs> yeah, it's true, Padma. Oh, the gallery police. I'll tell you a story about that. But anyway, I mean, just amazing, right? Like you can, you can definitely defend <laughs> being kind of obsessed with quilts. And I don't really love like that term. Like, oh, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this cheese. I'm obsessed. Like, I don't know. But you can sort of be obsessed with these things. I mean, I think about them a lot. I think that means I'm kind of obsessed with them. But they, they're they're worth it. You know, they're worth it. All right, let's look at these. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there a gallery? Is it scrolling? No. Okay, I have to go back. Quilt 21, 178 centimeters by 148 centimeters, cotton and bamboo. Interesting. Okay, bye Viv. It's so good. It's so good to see you. And now it is getting late <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally there with you. But we shall press on and you can watch the replay. I'm so glad to see you. Okay, quilt 20. Mmm, that reminds me of a Holstein cow. Does it not? I mean, really, like, immediately thought of a Holstein cow. And they're amazing, right? Um, interesting. It's, it's interesting because they're like, I mean, they have that modern quilt, you know. I mean, it's straight line stitching, right? That's very modern quilt style, straight line stitching. But um, it, it leaves that world, I think. Um, and I can't tell you exactly why. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're okay. I, oh, I already told you that story. Padma, thank you very much. I did tell you that story. I think it, yes, it was another one of my emotional moments when I got into my emotions. I got into my feelings. Thank you for remembering. And I'm sure that woman was standing in front of that quilt keeping people from enjoying what they came to enjoy. It's fine. But you know what I'm saying? Like these quilts have have certain characteristics of, of you know, modern quilts, the modern style. I mean, that's there's not a lot of quilting on this one. Obviously, modern quilts, some of them have tons of quilting. The one that won Best in Show in 2020, so much quilting. But early modern quilts had not so much sewing or quilting sorry quilting and this reminds me of that when was this made um a whole episode yes padma yes a whole episode on quilts made out of clothes or clothing materials. Yep, I'm into it. We're doing it. Clothes or clothing materials. I love that. Yep. Don't think I don't have a long list going of all these wonderful um, subscriptions. These all these wonderful um, suggestions that you all have. Um, wait, okay. SJ says, what happened? What happened? Oh, no. Oh, it's bad. You had a blue screen of death? Oh, no. Okay. It's back. You're okay? Blue screen of death. Okay. Don't, don't do that again. I'm too tired to, to be able to fix it. Yeah, I'm loving these quilts, too. I'm super loving them. Okay, let's look at some more. Oh, yeah. If we look at quilts made of clothes and... Well, you know what? Padma, you're like nine steps ahead of me usually, and now you're like 19 steps ahead of me because I just said almost out loud, you know, we had another quilt just tonight that had clothes in it. Something tells me that part of your point is that we looked at a quilt that had clothes in it, and then we just looked at another one, and it's probably where you got the idea to suggest that show. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. That's groovy. Sid, I hope you're still 
up in here because my friend Sid is in art school. She got into a very prestigious art school in Chicago. And uh, they are very, very uh, talented. And I will... Um, I will be so happy when I can see them again. And this is a very art school, <laughs> like art school students wish, you know, hope that they can get to the point where they're doing this. Not you, Sid, you can do anything. But like, wow, this is really cool. Hey, Belle. Belle, Belle, Belle. So glad to see you. I'm so glad you're here. You're not late. You're right on time. Um, love this. Absolutely love this. This looks like uh, Paul Klee or, or maybe um, Calder. Right, a little Alexander Calder action. Um, okay. Belle, this has been a total side trip. Did not know that this is what was gonna happen. Wait a minute. Hold on, was that silverware? You were napping. I mean, that sounds, that sounds really nice. I will be going in for a overnight nap uh, after I'm done here. Do you saw those silverware? What's going on here? Wow. Oh, y'all. Very Calder, right, Stephanie? Okay. <sighs> once again, I mean, once again, this is, we need to have her on the show, you know? And I know I keep saying that and I don't want to, you know, it's people who are here like, all right, already get some interviews going, but I've got to learn all the basics of this platform before I bring people in, you know, but I just keep mentioning it because it's going to be so awesome, you know, like, hey, Annabelle, tell us about this piece. <laughs> What's up with this amazing work of art that you made? Because I don't know the story behind it. But it's obviously a table runner, a tablecloth. It's just wonderful. It's fascinating. So, Belle, yeah, so we, we started with a, a Revolutionary War uh, era. Well, no, a quilt that used, I'll show you before we leave. I'll pop it up on the screen again. Um, a quilt that used a, a cloak in it. And then we started looking at this quilt that sold for 15,000 pounds in Scotland. And these are the people who made that quilt. Oh, let me put the link in the chat. Um, well, this is the link to this actual quilt, but obviously you can, yeah, that's their website, right? Really, really, really interesting. Okay, so so we need to look at all of those. This 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 here on the right is the most modern-ish, you know, looking thing. I've seen things a little bit like this, you know, but it 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 is I don't know. I don't know. There's there's some ab there is truly abstract expressionism happening here. A lot of people say that when they're looking at quilts, like modern quilts and stuff, but it's not always necessarily true. Like, but I think they are kind of getting, getting at a little bit more of that. It's interesting. The quilting is really, there's not much of it, right? And it's pretty standardized. <clears throat> just interesting. Okay. Let's just read about them and then I love that there's these these two women, right? It's so groovy. Um, at the center of our friendship, so this is Sheila and Annabelle, okay? I won't read all of this, but I'll read some of it. At the center of our friendship is a shared interest and experience in architecture, same, art, food, and fashion. I would very much like to get in touch with this Annabelle person and Sheila too. Over the years, we've developed a way of seeing that is described in these quilts through their execution, their design, and their materiality. We produce objects that describe our united sensibilities from our lives in Glasgow, Glasgow and London. The subject or shapes created in each quilt begin with a relationship between the fabrics chosen and the particular building Hang on, you know what I like to do. You know I like to pull the text down here and and flick through beautiful things, right? For you while I'm reading. Because that's what I'd want. Ooh, this is great. I got a slideshow. Oh wow. Okay, this is the catalog. I'm just gonna flip through this catalog. I'm gonna go full screen on it. Ah, it's like they knew. <laughs> it's like they knew that their work made me cry and I needed to 
have things go uh, easily for me. So this looks like a catalog from a recent exhibition. Not sure. It's 88 pages, so maybe they have a book. Is that what this is? Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. The subjects or shapes created in each quilt begin with a relationship between the fabrics chosen and the particular building, landscape, or combination of the two that it describes. From collected images, travels, ideas, and memories, we take an architect, building, or place, and respond to these in either intimate detail or broad context. Some ending with more literal or graphic representations, while others taken from a micro or macro view appear more abstracted. Our hand-sewn architectural quilts have been put together using our personal collection of clothing, Padma, from friends and family who have loved each piece for a reason. From cotton kimonos worn to paper by Annabelle's father, ancient, this book is beautiful, ancient plantation shirts by Issey Miyake, worn by mother and daughter until the indigo has faded to almost white in part, interesting, to a skirt designed by April, Cri April Crichton for one of the first collections of Sonia by Sonia Raquel. Oh, I, I'm seriously, seriously, I need, I need, I want to meet them. I, I, I want to say, I want to be friends with them. I need to be their friend. They're speaking my language. Architecture, quilts, Sonia Raquel. I mean, can I be your friend? <laughs> please, please. Um, our interest in each piece of fabric ranges from its historical significance, its emotional attachment, same, to the quality produced by the wearer of its owners. Hang on, let me check the chat. Um, mm -hmm. You zoom in, yep. Looks wrinkled, mm-hmm. Big stitch. I know the minimalism. This is really, really cool. Yay! Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Elle has got her books on the way. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Whilst taking, wait, yeah. Whilst taking inspiration from traditional American and Japanese quilt making techniques, aha, uh -huh, they may have used that Sashiko technique, we are not bound by them. Instead, we bring many outside influences and contradictions to their construction. The shapes of the deconstructed clothes might inform the patterns, and where traditional quilting follows the grain of fabric, we delight in going against the grain. Taking hundreds of hours to produce, each quilt is a unique object that tells its own layered story. The initial idea or subject, the selection of materials, the clothes, the people, the form it takes as it develops, the back of the quilt's relationship to the front, that's groovy. And the, the quilt you're seeing now is, is cool. And finally, how these two are bound by the hand quilting that overlays all of these. All hand quilting. I guess I, it's, yeah, that made sense, but it's really straight. <laughs> That's all hand quilting. I mean, it, it, you know, it looks more like hand quilting than machine, but it's just like super straight. Last paragraph. It is the intimacy and connection of working closely and by hand with each quilt that forms the bind between the fragments of clothing, their memories, and their histories. A shirt worn and loved for different reasons, whether for celebration or utility, is taken apart. These pieces are then reconstructed by us to form a new story. Mm. These stories are brought to life by the movement of the hand stitching across the quilt. It's repetition, it's skill, it's forgiveness, sorry, it's forgivingness, it's fallibility. Oh, I love that. And then there's a bit about Sheila and a bit about Annabelle. And I need to read both of those bits to you because I need to learn about my friends. Sheila Boyce was born in Glasgow in 1969. She studied education and taught in primary schools in Glasgow for 20 years. Wow, cool. She lived in Berlin with her partner, Martin, and two sons for two years, from 2005 to 2007. She managed the design and renovation of their arts and crafts home, cool, from 2013 to 2014. She studied quilting under the master sewer, P 
Patricia McIndo. Do you know this person? Patricia McIndo. I'll put it in the chat. In Glasgow. Hold on. Like, people ask me how I know about, like, so much about quilts. It's because of this. Because I'm like, oh, who's that? Patricia McIndo. And then later in my life, I'll be like, oh, it reminds me of that work by Patricia McIndo. Let's, I just spend time with this stuff. Wow. Okay. Okay, hang on. Almost there. Um, yeah, we're on page 62 out of 88. This is, this is being timed perfectly. Um, so she studied with Patricia McIndo in Glasgow before establishing Arrange Whatever Pieces Come Your Way with Annabelle Hardy. She's traveled extensively, has a strong interest in architecture, art, and design. Through the combination of teaching and nurturing her interest in the arts, she's developed a strong understanding of the importance of design and communication. And Annabelle, that's a great picture, kind of reminds me of quilt folk photography. Annabelle Hardy was born in London in 1965, having worked at the Royal College of Art and lived in Havana, Cuba. Cool. She studied architecture at the Macintosh School of Architecture in Glasgow. In her year out, Annabelle worked for Martorell, Bohigas, and McKay in Barcelona on the Olympic Village before returning to complete her diploma in Florence and Glasgow. Oh, that's cool. Look at that, the work clothes or denim, denim stuff. She's a model maker um, and skilled craftsperson, and she formed a press, Henderson Press, in 2002, through which she made handmade artist books. Groovy. She established, established Hardy and Hardy Architects in 97 with her partner, Stephen, where she still practices. So she's a working architect. Wow, this is great. This one on the right. Mm. Love it. Oh, Virginia Woolf, never mind. Arrange whatever pieces come your way. Never be unseated by the shying of that undependable brute life. Wow. Hmm. Arrange whatever pieces come your way. I mean, that that's so great for a quilt maker, right? <laughs> Probably why they picked it. Arrange whatever pieces come your way. Wow, so cool. Mm. 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 That's wonderful. Well, anyway, so I'm I'm a fan. I'm into it. <gasps> Look at that puppy. Look at that little guy right there. Oh, I can't zoom in. Well, maybe I can. All right. So that's them. I will probably just, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll tell them that I talked about them on this show and hope that they think it was cool. And then I'll be like, I'll just have a reason to out, <laughs> a reason to contact them. You know, I can't just be like, hi, my name's Mary. I really like your work. Can we hang out? But if I'm like, hi, my name's Mary Fonz. <laughs> I'm a quilt maker. Ugh. And I talked about you and I wanted to let you know, you know, it's like, Hey, I talked about you. I wanted to let you know. Also, are you in London? Do you want to have a cup of coffee? Um, okay, Belle. Um, thank you for coming and come back. come back. Come back. So that's it. That's what's going on there. I, I, I have to say I am a little bit, a little bit tired. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to look. At one more. Yeah, I mean, it's 1115. I have been I signed into the workshop at five o'clock. Five to six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, it's been a little while, but we're not done. Oh, no, we're not done. We're not done. Because I, I want to know about this person. And if we look at this quilt, and we talk about it, and I read to you a little bit about Rebecca Scattergood. Oh, then, then we'll start with her next time. We will, we will, because I, I am not, I'm not going to be satisfied if it's just one. Um, okay, good. That's what I'll do. SJ says you can blame us, Mary. Just tell them your Twitch stream audience asked you to reach out to them. Excellent. I'll be like, hi, Annabelle. <laughs> she looked. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to email you, but <sighs> these people in my chat room. They're just great. Like, they're amazing. I have to, I can't, like, go back and say that I didn't do it. So, you know, I have to talk to you. Okay. Um, here's what this is. I did not have time to print it out. But I have a little bit about Rebecca Scattergood to read to you. Okay. What is this? Okay. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, this this is like. Oh, this picture is awesome. Oh, the truly high res photograph is like a joy. How many pieces? <laughs> you know, I should do some contests and giveaways and stuff. Um, yeah, Adita, totally. And if somebody like properly guessed or accurately guessed the uh, the number of pieces in this quilt, you get a big prize. Oh, this cheese is so good. I would. Uh, I think that'd be a good. I mean, you could just count them, you know. I would have to get the right answer from someone. But what if I had a timer? Okay. So what if I had like a timer? I know I'd have to count them exactly. I could have a timer and it could count down on screen, you know, like right here. This Twitch is just good like that. So I could have like this timer and this buzzer and people could like put their guess in the chat and then the buzzer would go off and whoever was closest would get cheese or whatever you want. <clears throat> okay. So hang on. Okay, here, here. So this quilt is made. I mean, how, what do you think though? What do you think? I'm serious. Like we analyze quilts here. We can do that. What would you say? The chevrons where the sections meet are neat. Oh yeah. I see what you mean. <laughs> Valerie, 15,000 looks like a lot. Agreed. Agreed. I really like what, what you just said. Um, who was it? Little bird. Yeah. The chevrons that appear like right in here, right? Is that what you're, that's what you're talking about. Sort of this beam, this beam of chevrons. It's really cool. Isn't it? Oh, it's so cool. I love it. It's amazing. I do feel like I do. F <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not school. Yeah. It's like not totally. Yeah. It's not perfect. Right. Whatever that means. But I do feel a little bit freaked out by quilts like this. Um, some Lone Star quilts can be so, have so many pieces that it kind of looks like, like, have you seen, well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. It's not vulgar, but I would, I was going to reference a movie, but I'm afraid if I say it, you'll never be able to look at these quilts again without thinking that. And I'm not going to do it to you. Um, but it reminds me of a movie. Um, a weird movie. <laughs> Yeah. Um, really want me to tell you, I'll tell you. Um, okay. So Rebecca Scattergood made this. All right. So this quilt, um, the sunburst quilt, the sunburst quilt. So this is from an issue of Clarion magazine. I have to say it now. Okay. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to say what, what movie and if you don't want to know, you have to plug your ears. I'm serious. Okay, I'm going to say it in three, two, one. Dune. You know? <laughs> you know, have you seen Dune? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't. I didn't. I wanted to give you a countdown. I'm so sorry. I did not do that. I don't like, I don't like tricks, jokes, mean jokes like that. Practical joke. I don't, I, I'm so sorry. If you heard what I said, I didn't mean, I didn't mean for that to happen. Oh, you haven't seen it. Good. <laughs> okay, good. This quilt. Okay. Quote. Now I'm going to read you about this. This quilt was made for mother by my great grandmother, Rebecca Scatter, Good Savory, 1839. Okay. Sometime around 1890 or 1900, Hannah Savory Mellor wrote those words on a piece of white cotton, approximately four by eight inches, and carefully sewed her message to the back of a magnificent sunburst pattern quilt. This one. She was preserving a piece of family history for her own daughter, and in so doing has inadvertently aided in the piecing together of a story of her extended Quaker family. Quaker. Didn't know it her Quaker family living in and near Philadelphia in the middle of the 19th century. Gosh, we've really been up in the 19th century tonight, but we also jumped way ahead to see those awesome, those women. 
Um, here's what I'm going to do. So Savory was a Philadelphia Quaker woman who lived from 1770 to 1855. Okay, that article is long and I want to read it all. But right now, because I want to just show you why this matters, I'm going to pull up a couple other quilts that she made. Um, because they're crazy. They're all crazy. Amazing. I mean, that one being an example. Um, so it looks like, so she's Philadelphia. Is Philadelphia, is Philadelphia New England? I, that might be a really, really silly question because it may obviously be, but I think of like, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, <laughs> you know, Vermont, New York, Canada. like what is New England? What is, what is New England? Um, Rebecca Scattergood Savory Quilt. Here's what I'm going to do. I am just going to do that thing when I pull up the internet because there's just a bunch of them. Look at these. Whew. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Wow, so that's at the study, that's at the International Quilt Museum. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of lost some of my juice, y'all. I mean, it did happen. I mean, I'm, I'm good, I'm gonna, we're gonna finish strong, but when I when I say, wow, cool, you know that it's like, good night. Um, Philly, okay, so Philly, Wikipedia knows an estimate as to the number of pieces. Does it really? Carol, what did it say? Little Bird says, Philly is in Philadelphia, south and west of New York. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I clicked away from this one. Um, Valerie says, yeah, it is pretty. It is pretty. Hey, Belle, thanks. You did a thing where you sent me a thing, and I love that. You sent, like, bits. Basically, you're tipping the waiter. <laughs> Which is awesome. I appreciate it. I, 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 I think that's really cool. I, you can tip me, people, if you like the like the show. Bell, tell them how to do it because I don't know how yet. Um, <laughs> Mary is not going to send you a bag of chips if you cheat and ask Wikipedia. It's true. Huh. Interesting. Carol does not. She needs no chips, <laughs> no crisps from me. Um, almost four thousand. It's nine feet seven inches by nine feet ten inches there are more pieces than that <laughs> thanks god bless you viewer one bell there's more than that there's more than that isn't there because i made a quilt with a whole bunch of half square triangles and there's 1200 pieces in it and it is not well yeah, only fourth. I don't think so, Stephanie. No, 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 I don't think so. I just don't think so. I mean, look at this freaking thing. I mean, it's just not, it's not. There's no way. There's no way that's just 4,000. I, I just have to wait because I have to see what you all think. Yeah, D. Marie, thank you. Am I going to have to like, I want, I do want to, I'm not now. It's probably a bad idea, but what you'd have to do, all you'd need to do is, that's terrible, but see the big wedges, right? The big triangle, this one right here, you just count up how many pieces are in the triangle and then, you know, multiply them here. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of difference, but then, and then you've got this, the, the corner pieces, but I just... Carol said, Bell, that it's nine foot seven inches by nine foot ten inches. That's huge. That's a big queen size quilt. There's more than 4,000. I just think so. If somebody wants to count, that's a very, 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 very good picture. It's a very high res. Look how close you can get. Okay. If somebody counts. How many pieces are in there? 
by Tuesday. Then you have more time than I do <laughs> right now. Um, no, but it, it, it'd be great. It'd be great if somebody did. I don't know what to say beyond that. I want to say I'll give you something or there'll be a prize, but I shouldn't promise a prize until I know what that could be and how it would work. But um, one thing on this quilt, I just wanted to say that I love the color. The, the colors here. Look at that. That gold. That gold and that turquoise. Wow. I think it's awesome. This is a great fabric right there. Huh. Interesting. Wow. All right. Just a few more here. They're small, but it's okay. Um, can I make that bigger? No. That's cool. All really, really interesting. This one, that's another shot of that same. Yeah, I can write Wikipedia. Um, I want to write quilt content for Wikipedia. You know, quilt entries. They need more. Oh, that's awful. Um, whoa. Whoa. Don't love that one, but that's fine. Red, yellow, and blue. The primary colors. It just looks circusy to me, always. You know? This, by the way, is the article that I had pulled up. So we may take another look at it. But if you're curious, that's the, the article from Clarion. The very, the, look, look, this is the Clarion, America's folk art magazine. Very fancy. I don't know if they produce it anymore. It's It was very beautiful. It was also, I don't know. It just, the issues that I've seen of it, they're very lovely and beautiful. And it just, to me, it's just like, hi, we're super rich. Like the reader is like a super rich person in a major city or just outside a major city who collects like expensive folk art. I don't know. It just always seemed like there's just a lot of, at least there were lots of ads when I was looking through issues of this from days gone by, just tons of like antique dealers that like if you have to ask how much that buffet costs you can't afford it you know that kind of stuff it just seemed very very like that but i'm sure they're very nice um anyway okay well that's interesting um y'all it's really hey pj meep when did pj meep pj meep showed up pj meep I love saying that name so much. Um, PJ Meep, <laughs> you came in and I'm, and I'm, I gotta stick a fork in, in me because I think I'm done. Um, it's been an amazing day. I love today. Today was great. And I've been kind of like on camera since about six, well, yeah, since just before 6 p.m. my time. It's 11.30. So I'm, I'm, I'm dragging. Um, I'm a dragon. But, ooh, oh, you know who this is? Allison Smith. Do you know who this person is? Yeah. Okay. Carol thinks 4,000 is probably pretty close. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The math has been worked out a little bit. People with definitely educated opinions are saying 4,000 is about right. Well, they got that from somewhere. I mean, somebody wrote that, that, that text. Do you know Allison Smith? Should we be looking at Allison Smith next time? Is that where we should begin? She's an interesting artist, very interesting artist. Um, but maybe we're looking at her now. I think, well, no, cause see, we have to look at this. Isn't that amazing? Tilt top table, scatter good, scatter good. That's what it's called. That's why it came up on the search, of course. I was like, what a coincidence. But yeah, tilt top table Scattergood. So she's referencing R Rebecca Scattergood in this piece. I will put this link in the chat. Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Was that a quilt or a hologram? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure it's a quilt. It was a quilt, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a quilt. Yeah, it's a quilt. <sighs> okay, I just want to do one thing. This is just what we're going to do. We're going to go to her Instagram. We're going to follow her on Instagram. 
then we're going to go back to this thing. My mom used to say when I was little, I've probably said this to you before, but she said when I was little I and I was tired, I would get the look. And I was always very agreeable and mom would be like, Mary, <laughs> I think you've got the look. <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> and I'd just be like, I'm tired, <laughs> but I would kind of get this, like, <laughs> I get the look. <laughs> so I have the look. Um, oh, forward one page. Sorry, sorry. Forward one page. This, this one. Allison Smith. Oh, Myra, you're the best. So good. You're grateful. Okay. Oh, awesome. That's amazing. Myra, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. It'll be a great day tomorrow. And uh, yeah, all right. Y'all, we'll, we'll just, Tuesday night, it's going to be awesome. I will have had a lot of sleep. And uh, I just, I love y'all. Thank you so much for coming. And, and uh, yeah, I, I really got the look now. Just, just, just ha happened. Okay, I'll see you on Tuesday uh, if I don't see you tomorrow, okay?